Chiefs Kingdom. My name is Jay Sanders. You're watching the Chiefs Report, and let's dive right into today's show with injury news as the Chiefs this morning had some major injury news with both Richie James and Prince Tegu Wanogo going to injured reserve. Those are the big ones as, ah, man, both those guys going to IR, it doesn't look too good. So again, the two injuries that are major today, Richie James, he had his MCL. That's going to be leading him to the injured reserve. And then Prince Tegu Wanogo has a torn quad. Andy Reid said this morning that it's not really confirmed yet whether this will be a season-ending injury, whether or not he'll be out for the minimum four weeks and come back. There isn't really much news on it just yet. They're still waiting for tests, but not what you want to hear for Winogo. Uh, Torrey Quad does not sound fun, and MCL with Richie James hopefully just going to be the next three weeks, and then we'll have him back on the squad. But I know one thing. If you want to keep the injuries away, you want the Chiefs to stay healthy, like the video, I know that it's going to help out a little bit. And if you want the Chiefs healthy, pretty easy. Just like the video. Let me know you want them to stay healthy. All right. What do these moves mean for the Chiefs? That's the first topic we're going to start with. And I think the number one thing is the Chiefs have a new return man. So obviously, Richie James, his main thing was not being a wide receiver. He only had three targets, one reception over the first two games. He was the return man. Well, we saw this past week when the Chiefs took on the Bears, that duty fell to Montrell Washington. Now, Montrell Washington signed to the practice squad about a week before the season started, specifically for things like this, if Richie James were to get injured, because they didn't want to have to go to Kadarius Tony or Sky Moore in the return role. They wanted that return role to be Richie James or somebody else. They didn't want to risk injury with Tony or Moore. They got Montrell Washington, who has 644 return yards in his career. He's a young guy, and if you can kind of compare him to Richie James and his return stats, the average is what I'm going to look at most. Because obviously Richie James in terms of punt returns attempts, kick return attempts, is way far, far above what Montreal Washington has gotten. But he is just at last year with the Broncos. That's all that stat is coming from. And plus the one game he had this past week. But 12.9 average for Richie James and 12.2 for Montreal Washington. I think overall that's a pretty comparable number. I kind of like what I've seen from him, but... You see these stats, obviously you have one veteran, and you have a guy who's kind of new, still kind of learning the ropes. Who do you like more? I think that it's hard to say right now because, man, Richie James is just kind of that veteran guy. He's returned punts, kicks for a long time. If you think you like him overall, type R, but he muffed a punt. He muffed a punt. He had two games, and he muffed one punt. I haven't seen Montreal do that. He had one game already. We'll see if he does it in this upcoming game against the Jets. But who do you like more, type R for Richie James? If you like Montreal Washington, what you've seen from him in the first game, then type M. And my take, I like Washington. I like what he brings to the table. I think overall, he's got those fresher legs. And not that I'm dogging on Richie James, because I know what he's capable of in the return game. But overall, Montreal Washington just kind of has that jolt that I don't think I think, I don't think I saw from Richie James, not in preseason, not in the first two games when he returned punts and kicks. I like what I've seen from Montreal. He had not going to say like any amazing returns against the Bears, but he cut it well. He, he made the cuts well. Overall, was very speedy in the return game. Followed his blocks. His vision is, I think, what's going to set him apart because Richie James, there was a couple times where he just ran right into the back of his blockers. I didn't see that from Montreal Washington in game one. Hopefully, he continues that in game two. And hey, who knows? Maybe he'll return a punt or a kick this upcoming Sunday night football match. All right, that goes to number two of now we got to talk about Prince Tegu Winogo. Winogo. And that's going to be breaking down the Chiefs' offensive tackle options. How do we go from here? Now, Prince Tegu was not the starter on the line, but he was definitely a key, key piece. He was in the line more than 50% of the plays. He was there a lot. And again, that torn quad is not going to heal very quickly. I would have to think this is at least an eight-week injury. I don't think we're going to see him until maybe, if, if he's lucky, I would say week 11, week 12 area. I just don't see him coming, up, coming back before then. And Andy Reid kind of mentioned it this morning, a torn quad. That could be the end of the season for Prince Tegu. I hope it's not, but we have to start thinking about, okay, how does this offensive line look without him? Well, I think that's going to fall on a couple of guys. So obviously there's the starts with Donovan Smith, Joe Tooney, Creed Humphrey, Trey Smith, and Jawan Taylor. Jawan Taylor we can have our ifs and buts about later. But right now, Prince Tegu Winogo, Winogo came in for Donovan Smith. He came in for Trey Smith a lot. 
Well, now you got to look at two guys. And there's two guys that I am looking at. Well, I think that's going to go to one, Lucas Niang. Now, Niang, he's not necessarily going to be the speed of Prince Tegu, but Lucas Niang is definitely going to have the size. He's a bigger guy. He knows how to protect this quarterback. And this offensive line has been absolutely outstanding. They've only allowed um, Patrick Mahomes to be hit 16 times. He's only been sacked once. And the Chiefs are one of two teams in the entire NFL that do not have an offensive lineman who has been credited with a sack. Lucas Niang, you got to come in here. I want you to perform the same exact way that we've seen from this entire offensive line. I don't care if you're a depth guy. I'm asking the same thing. Now, the second guy that I'm looking at is Wanya Morris, the rookie out of Oklahoma. And I, a part of me thinks he may be the better guy. But overall, he's younger. You can kind of see the body type there. He's going to move a little more quicker. He reminds me more of Prince Tegu than Lucas Niang. So with that being said, I think I'm leading the rookie here. I'm leading the rookie, Wanya Morris, because overall in the preseason, he was pretty good at the offensive line position. He kind of, I'm not going to say was like a top-tier guy, but he was a notable name in the preseason, Wanya. So I'm hoping to see exactly out of that if he comes in the depth role, which is probably going to see him put in this week. He was inactive last week. This week, without Prince Tegu, you're in, buddy. You're in. All right, another move that was made as these two guys went in AR, you had to add somebody to the 53 man roster. The first guy, not, excuse me, second guy beside Montreal Washington was Matt Dickerson, this defensive tackle. He signed to the active roster today, and he had been kind of on the fringe of the roster when the original 53 man roster came out. And unfortunately, he just didn't make it, but now, you have Prince Tegu go to the IR. He's the one they chose to bring up to give more depth in that defensive tackle role rather than going with offensive line help. Interesting choice, but Dickerson, again, fringe guy. Now he gets to be on the 53-man roster. All right, coming up next, we're going to talk more injury news. As these were just the two major ones. There was also a couple guys who did not practice today. We're going to get to those in just a minute. Plus, the Chiefs have added two players to their practice squad, given both Matt Dickerson and Montreal Washington were taking off. Two spots open up. They added two guys. We're going to talk about both of them in just a minute. But before that, i got to tell you about Prize Picks, a brand new sponsor here on the Chiefs Report. And Prize Picks is a skill-based, real money, daily fantasy sports game. Now, how does it work, you ask? Well, you pick two to six players, and if they will go more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. And Prize Picks is the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America and is the easiest way to play daily fantasy sports. Now check it out at prizepicks.com CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. And I gotta tell you, I've been playing Prize Picks recently and I have no idea why I waited so long. Players can choose from a vast selection of sports and stat types not offered anywhere else. They can even pick in-game projections after game has started, which includes halves, quarters, periods, and more. And with Thursday Night Football up, I'm throwing my hat in here because I'm a more guy. I've said this before. I'm going to say it again. I'm always going to go with more because I think it's not as fun when you're rooting for less. When you're rooting for somebody to not do well, I don't think it's as fun. So I'm always going to go that more, and I'm picking these guys to go. Almond Ross, St. Brown, 77 and a half yards. No way he's getting less than that. He's gotten 102 his past two games. I'm going more with Amon Ross St. Brown. Jameer Gibbs, 57 and a half. Montgomery, the lead back in week one. And he got injured now. I don't know how fully healthy he was going to be. Jameer was the lead back last week with him out. He had 87 yards. I think that Jameer is going to get the more on this one. And then Jordan Love, 222.5. Listen, I'm not going to say he's the best quarterback of all time, but he's going to get yardage, especially against a depleted secondary for the Lions. I'm going more on that as well. And those are my picks for Thursday night. Why don't you do it yourself? You can use, again, prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types. That's what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Shout out to Prize Picks. They're my guys. It's a daily fantasy sports app made easy. All right, I mentioned injury reports. Let's dive into the full thing. We already talked Richie James and Prince Tegu Winogo, who are both on the IR officially. Richie James was yesterday. Prince Tegu was today. Nick Bolton also not practicing today with that ankle. He has not been moved to IR, and this is kind of a monitoring situation. Drew Tranquil came in and filled in for him. We're going to have to see if he can hopefully play this week. Bolton, 
looked good the first two weeks. I'd really like to have him back on the field. And then Noah Gray, the backup tight end, is sick. Uh, Andy Reid said, if you kind of remember, Clyde edwards helaire had this two weeks ago, kind of a stomach bug type thing where he should be back on the practice field, hopefully tomorrow in a limited capacity. And if not, he should be good to go on Sunday night, whether that's a, hey, we're throwing you out there without any practice or whatever. Backup tight end with Travis Kelsey, you're probably not going to see much of him, but he did not play in any practice form today. He was actually not at the facility. Now, Nick Bolton, the ankle I mentioned, Drew Tranquil took over for Nick Bolton this past week, and he called the plays, and i got to be honest, they didn't miss a beat. They didn't. They took down the Bears really easy. Now, I know the Bears' offense isn't that good, but again, they, they allowed them for zero points in the first half, and they only had 10 points in the second half, 10 points in the entire game, and that last touchdown came in the fourth quarter. I'm not really going to count that against them, but four yards per play is the stat that I continue to look at. It's just crazy when you can – hold a NFL offense, especially one like, I'm going to say it, I know that Justin Fields is not a top-tier quarterback, but is he athletic? Yes. You hold him and that offense to four yards per play, I'm going to give you kudos every time. Plus, the interception and fumble coming from the first teamers on defense really liked, again, them forcing the turnovers. That would have been the one thing that not necessarily they hadn't done well, but something that they hadn't kept continuously doing. They did it last week really efficiently, and I like what I see from them. Before we move on here in the show and tell you who got picked up by the Chiefs, hit that subscribe button. We're hit putting out Chiefs daily news every single day. And when a new Chiefs video drops, you want to be available, well, hit that sub button and go the extra mile. Hit the notification button as well so you never miss another video. As here at the Chiefs Report, we're making sure that you're kept well informed on everything Kansas City Chiefs. And with that well informed, well, let's go right into the spots that were needed to fill for the Chiefs and Andy Reid as now with Prince Tegu Winogo along with Richie James on injured reserve. Well, Andy Reid had some open slots and him and Brett Veach made some moves. They signed two wide receivers to the practice squad, Daniel Rise and Chase Cota. I honestly did not expect two wide receivers to be the ones that were signed to the practice squad, but I'm not going to say I don't like it. Now, Chase Cota is the first one we're going to look at because he was signed yesterday. Now, this was his college stats at Oregon, where he had 103 receptions, over 1,000 yards, and the big number I like. Again, I'm an average guy, 13.4. That is very, very, very good, plus nine touchdowns. I like that as well. And then Daniel Arias, he was signed today. Um, he originally was with the Arizona Cardinals. I've been working out with them. 750 yards, four touchdowns in college. He played for Colorado uh, before Dion, but he played for Colorado. So interesting, though, that they were two wide receivers. And they may never amount to anything, but at the same time, when Montreal Washington signed both eh, about four weeks ago now, I didn't really think that he was going to be anything. I think most of us thought, ah, oh, it's just a practice squad guy, and now he's the lead return man for the Chiefs. So maybe these guys could come up. Either way, you have two practice squads. You may as well fill them, see if you can find somebody, a diamond in the rough, they might say. I like Chase Cota. Daniel Ryan, I think I'm going to have to wait and see and what if anything happens. But overall, do you like these signings? I think ultimately it's a why for yes for pretty much everybody. If you type in for no, I don't really know why you would do that. But let me know in the comments. Type why for yes, type in for no. I think it's a why for me just because the simple fact that, I mean, you had two spots to fill. I will say being both of them wide receivers was a little interesting I almost would have liked you with the whole Blaine Gabbert situation to get Chase Coda and then maybe find a quarterback to put on the practice squad just to have. They didn't do that. Let me know what you think. Type Y for yes if you like the signings. Type in for no. Get in the comments and let me know. I'm going to be reading them and checking out who is all in there. All right, make sure you subscribe to the Chiefs Report. We're putting out daily videos every single day. I really appreciate everybody who's watching and heck, why don't we do it again? If you made it to the end of the video, I need your help. I want to know that you made it to the end of the video, and I want to make sure I respond to you in the comments. I want you to type real one in the comments today. And don't worry. Everyone who types real one, I'm going to be responding to. I did it last time. I'm doing it again. If you made it to the end of the video, I want to know you're a real one because you're a G. Type real one in the comments. If you have a question in there, put it in there. I'll answer that too. Either way, though, I'm happy that you're here. Appreciate you made it this far, and we'll see you on another Chiefs Report video. Peace out.